We all make mistakes, sometimes more often than we care to admit. You may have been a ham for so long that you probably can't remember, or don't care to remember, what it was like to be a newbie. My rookie days are much more recent, so my mistakes as an inexperienced ham are still all too painfully clear. I made so many mistakes during my first year as a licensed ham that I had enough to create a top 10 list. And who knows, maybe there are still some rookies out there that might benefit from my embarrassment. So here goes, my top 10 ham radio rookie mistakes. Let me know if you can relate to any of these. Or if you must, just laugh at me in the comments. One of the best things about being a ham is attending the many ham fests every year. Okay, let's assume we're talking about a normal year and not 2020. Seeing old friends, making new contacts, and having the opportunity to buy radio supplies and equipment at bargain prices can be almost intoxicating. But always beware of bargains that are being sold for a friend or a relative who couldn't make it to the ham fest. This is the easiest way for someone to legitimately sell broken or non-functional equipment under the guise of ignorance. This was my grandfather's equipment, and I don't know much about it. So I started off the conversation between myself and a flea market vendor at my first ham fest. I was looking for a power supply for my first HF rig. I needed a 30 amp supply to be safe. The supply for sale was an older Yesu with no specs on it, but it looked like it was decent quality. The seller said he believed it was a 30 amp supply. Now recall that I had told him I was looking for a 30 amp supply and had rookie written all over my face. And he said it worked fine as far as he knew of. Of course, he couldn't test it because he quote unquote didn't know much about ham radio equipment. And he couldn't guarantee it because quote wasn't his unquote. He wanted $40. I offered $20. And I should have been suspicious when he jumped at the offer, like he had won the lottery. It turned out the supply did not work, but only because it was missing a fuse. Of course, it was a very rare type that was hard to find. But worse than that, my Elmer opened it up and declared that it didn't look like it was even 3 amps, let alone 30. I ultimately found a brand new, nicely priced budget power supply, a Jetstream, for $79 online. It's a switching power supply. That's fine if you don't mind a tiny bit of background noise when it's running. 32 amps, and has a nice volt amp meter, a frequency shifter, and redundant power poles. I've been very happy with it, and it didn't break the bank. It currently powers both my base station radios simultaneously. I had a long wire end fed antenna over the house as my main HF antenna. It works fine, discounting the fact that polarization of the signal can't be changed and that will limit some stations I can communicate with, but one thing at a time. I get fairly decent operation, providing it's elevated far enough above the roof to avoid any interference and wind damage from abrasion. To accomplish this, I use a tall mast mounted to each end of my roof with the wire suspended from insulators between them. Since my first attempt is always to use the cheapest and easiest solution, you're getting to know me now, aren't you? I imagined that PVC piping would make a great mast since it didn't need to support much weight and its sole purpose was just to elevate a single wire. I quickly designed two masts, each using three five-foot PVC sections connected securely together by reinforced connectors with glue and screws and some eye hooks at the top to attach the insulator ends. It looked great, and it worked great.
That is, until a 10 mile an hour breeze knocked the whole thing down as easily as a category 3 hurricane would have. I discovered that PVC is way too flexible, especially the longer it is, and will bend at the slightest breeze until it pulls the wire away from the other mast, breaks the other mast entirely out of the reinforced connector, or breaks away entirely from the mount. Now in my case, all of the aforementioned maladies were observed within the first week of use. I learned to use only metal pipes for my antenna masts. Aluminum is strong enough and light enough for most simple applications like this. The irony is that I was able to find a used aluminum conduit at a second-hand hardware shop for much less than I paid for the PVC at the big box hardware store. But even so, aluminum and steel conduit is not that much more expensive than the PVC, even new. Especially considering that you will be replacing PVC soon after installation. Oh, and don't connect the insulator to the mast with biodegradable cotton string. Apparently, we have acid rain that will dissolve that in a matter of weeks. Ugh. After I installed my roof antenna multiple times, I finally had a solid and sustainable mast solution. I still had more high altitude exercise and another important lesson to learn up on the roof. However, that lesson was a sneaky one that would not reveal itself until after the rainy season had ended. The summer sun now revealed to me that the once gleaming braided steel wire that protected my antenna from the gusty wind all winter long had now faded into a crusty, rusty, brown mess that was literally crumbling into powder. One of the lines was already completely broken away from the ground, and the other started giving way just by touching it. And now, the second guy line was crumbling into pieces with the first. I needed a guy line that would be as strong as steel, but protected from the elements. Some poor ham many, many decades ago must have had the same problem and invented vinyl coated steel wire for just such an application. Too bad I didn't spend a few extra dollars on this first. I planned my design, bought the necessary new hardware, and enjoyed one more trip up onto the roof to fight the wind and the bees. Do yourself a favor and do not ever use bare steel wire for outdoor applications, no matter how attractive the price is or how much you don't mind replacing it, because it will not last six months in a moist climate.